for our tenant to tenant product I wanted to take some time now just to show you some of the more interesting features that we have especially around the coexistence models so I've got a batch here which is a project already set up and we've got four items in here I want to just dive up quickly up to the edit project and show you where that came from because if we look at tenant to tenant migration you can see I've turned on the T to T coexistence and have this set up correctly but here is the interesting one the scope mailbox discovery now this is something that we can only do inside the coexistence model but it does mean that we can specify an Azure AD group here for the users that are part of that discovery now obviously there's lots of other options here for the coexistence which you can go and turn off and and do these things yourself if you want to if you just want to use the mailbox discovery but what it's done is it's it's created a batch for us with these four users in it based on that membership now if I have a look at that membership I've just added an extra person in there as you can see we've got Merlin Milford I've just added um, had to add it obviously via the Exchange Admin Center it is a mail enabled security group so you can't add those in through Azure you have to do it through the EAC but you can see he's there so what we do on here is in the migration wiz we've added them in and under the manage tenant to tenant I just go and hit rediscover so I'll just do that and auto discover again and we'll just come back in a couple of minutes once that is completed so Merlin has been created in here and if I have a look at those settings I just want to tell you what it would have done in the back end so if we go to the tenant to tenant migration settings we can see that obviously it's ported out of migration group one where he was a member but the options we set on the, the whole project was we wanted to create mail user objects in the target. We're going to let them convert the mail user object into mailboxes during the pre-stage process. We're going to apply licenses at that time as well, which we've chosen. And after the migration is complete, we'll place a forwarder on that source mailbox. So if we go back to our project here, you can see Merlin Milford does now have a calljetengines.com address. If I flick over to the tenant, We'll see what that looks like so in the active users here we can see that Merlin is now an active user currently unlicensed but they do have an identity in the cloud that they could log on to if you want to log them on early then just go in and change their password and you can uh, have them access to any of the other items that they would have in the tenant now if we look under the exchange admin center you'll see under mailboxes there's no actual mailbox for him yet now that's because we haven't started the pre-stage we haven't done any of this work so quite rightly so there is no entry here if we look under contacts you'll see that's where he does exist he does have um, a forwarder back to cloud migration online and he is a mail user so once we start that whole migration process that will then change but what I'm showing you here is the fact that there is uh, an existence in the target tenant they are there they can now receive mail as merlin.milford at calljetengines.com and it's going to forward that automatically through that coexistence model through to the the cloud migration online which is where it's come from so really it means that this particular person is now set up for migration and we can go ahead with all those particular tasks the last thing to do there don't forget to apply that user migration bundle to put a license on there but uh, otherwise, yeah, thank you for watching that. Hope that gives you a quick insight into some of the batching and the functions of our T to T coexistence product. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions, but uh, have a good day. Thank you.